This podcast is brought to you by LMU Munich. So, ladies and gentlemen, very welcome after our little break. Now we will have a very interesting talk with Jacob Reef. He's from Innsbruck, Austria. First of all, very welcome in Germany. Thank and you. he will now start with his talk, Django CMS Cascade Plugin System. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks for coming. Um, just, I want to introduce myself. I'm Jacob Reef. Uh, I'm a full stack Django developer. And for the browser and client part, I'm currently using Angular GS, uh, still version one. Um, I'm the maintainer of half a dozen of Django apps, and for instance, Django Shop and Django Angular, which are uh, quite popular uh, on GitHub. Um, one question, if somebody of you is using uh, Django Treebird um, in one of your, uh, for one of your projects, uh, please contact me after the talk and I would like to uh, talk with you about that. Um, today I will speak about uh, the Cascade plugin system, which is an uh, extension for uh, Django CMS. A short introduction to Django CMS. Everybody is familiar somehow with Django CMS? Oh, not, not so many. So uh, <laughs> I will uh, just give a short introduction. Django CMS um, is the most popular Django-based content management system if you use uh, GitHub stars as the metric for measuring popularity. Um, what I like about it, it's uh, very Djangonic. It uh, uses the Django admin for administration. Um, and it um, uses Django slugs to build URLs. And you can even extend your, add your own application to Django CMS quite easily. And therefore, I would say that Django CMS is a very good uh, Django citizen. Um, Django CMS is not opinionated towards any HTML or CSS frameworks and therefore it's completely up to you how you style your pages or what kind of framework uh, then you are using in the backend. Um, pages can contain one or mo more placeholders and those placeholders then are filled with uh, plugins. In other content management systems like uh, Drupal, you would name that a content, uh, content type. Uh, pages as well as uh, plugins are nested uh, and are arranged as tree. So now in practice, how does this look like? Um, this is the normal Django admin, we all know. And uh, in here we have a list view and the list view is arranged as a tree. And uh, here you can just uh, choose your pages and uh, go into the detail view of uh, the pages. The detail view itself then is um, in, um, in front end editing. Therefore, you don't have to use the admin for editing uh, the detail, uh, the front end detail view. So. so just a disclaimer, uh, that's my personal perception, but I've seen that happening in many uh, projects where people set up um, a CMS for their clients. And the first thing is they create some kind of markup. They sometimes use uh, InVision or uh, Photoshop. And uh, they even style all the colors and um, uh, all the styles. And, um, uh, then, from uh, those markups, the, uh, they create pages and uh, CMS templates, and uh, these templates then have a lot of placeholders where uh, editors and uh, project managers then add the content uh, of the site. Um, for my point of view, that's a downside because it requires everybody involved in the project to get familiar with the complete specification uh, instead of focusing on decoupled components. And decoupled components are very important in software development, as we know. And uh, that's the reason why I want to emphasize this. In here, we have a assembly line. 
And that's very often something we have in web development. We have a, an assembly line from uh, the markup down to the uh, final site. And um, I think we should rethink in more in a component uh, way. And therefore, development doesn't scale very well. Websites are expensive, and uh, it makes it difficult to work concurrently on uh, projects. Uh, because tasks have to be worked on sequentially. And it also contradicts the uh, principal design systems and not pages. So, one question, who is familiar with the term atomic design? Very good, so <laughs> I can give a, um, a short introduction. Um, atomic design is a um, terminology to um, boil down um, single components uh, in, in web design. Uh, atoms are the smallest part we have and uh, they symbolize something like a single button, button or an input field. Molecules are a combination of atoms, for example a form label, a search input, a button can join uh, together to create a form molecule. Organisms are molecules merged together to build up a complete form and templates are page level objects that place components into layout and articulate the design's underlying uh, content structure. And pages are specific instances of templates that show what UI uh, looks like with a real representation uh, content in place. There are um, the only <coughs> entities addressable through a URL. So that's where uh, CMS pages are for. Um, so now we can, oops, templates, no, so. Um, now we can separate the responsibilities. Programmers and UI experts built the atoms and molecules and organisms. And there we create uh, HTML um, fragments. And then project managers and content editors can assemble these components to build the final site and the, the final websites. Um, so we decouple these development steps and the designers and the programmers do not have to know where these components finally will be assembled. And this also makes it far easier to write unit tests for those single components, which then are even reusable for different uh, sites. Okay, in Django CMS, how this is a simplified um, template I'm using often for atomic design. You just use one big placeholder where then you will add all the, um, all the content of your site and um, this is, we have a menu structure which is still hard-coded and we have a footer which can be hard-coded but the main content will be just filled with our plugin system. Okay, if we, if you open a Django CMS website and you used that template I've shown before, you will see this main content placeholder and if you click on the plus symbol, you get uh, a menu, and then you can just um, select your plugins and then just uh, create a tree. Um, website builders like uh, Jimdo, Wix, or Webly try to hide the DOM from you, uh, but that makes it quite difficult to use your own CSS classes and to use um, existing frameworks such as uh, Bootstrap, uh, and its widgets. Um, to boil it down, plugins are HTML fragments. These HTML fragments then are rendered to output a complete rendered template of a, a, a complete um, HTML fragment. And uh, the context part from uh, there is the variable part and we need specialized editors for it so that our content managers can uh, edit this content. By storing the content in a JSON field, we don't have to create 
database models for each plugin. And instead we can use one shared model for all of them and it makes it easier to write our own plugins and you don't uh, need any database migrations uh, to, mo to modify those plugins. And currently, um, the Cascade plugin system implements most Bootstrap 3 widgets, but it could be easily extended to Foundation 5 or Bootstrap 4 or any other CSS framework. Synth <coughs> Since we store the data uh, arbitrarily in inside um, a JSON field, we can extend plugins with uh, optional interfaces. We can um, uh, use the content which can be shared among plugins. The template used for rendering can be exchanged on the fly, so we can have the same plugin with different templates. We can just add uh, CSS classes and inline styles to each plugin element, which is very important for styling. We can add an ID field so that we can create bookmark links from other pages so that we have deep links jumping, especially important if you have uh, uh, very long pages or single page applications. And uh, we can even add a Boolean field so that we can temporarily hide a plugin uh, which is uh, especially useful during, um, the, uh, during debugging or during development. This means that we can multiply the number of plugins by, uh, by these generic ex extensions. So I will just, uh, I will now go to the, um, to our, to a, uh, demo, which is, uh, which I, uh, oops. Um, for instance, uh, that page here is created completely with um, um, using uh, that system. Unfortunately, it does not, oh, I didn't, it does not scale here very well on that, um, uh, on that Beamer because the resolution is too, sl uh, too small. And um, so everything in here is uh, our simple Cascade plugins. And uh, if we, oops. And if we go to edit mode, you can see that we ha you have a complete um, tree of plugins building up that, uh, that whole website, including a map plugin, which, is, uh, which can be used to display uh, Google Maps or OpenStreetMaps. And um, we can even have uh, some icons. We can use, for instance, um, this icon here uh, is a part of this one here. Um, you can just you go to Fontello, which is a um, website to create um, font icons. And you can just download a whole bunch of font icons and import those font icons into the Cascade system and then just use them anywhere where, uh, where you have a uh, placeholder. Um, so uh, we can, I can just show how, you, how, you, how we could Use something in here. Oops. This is, if you start, you get this one here. And if we go to structure mode, I can just add a container, for instance. And we can just choose for which uh, bootstrap breakpoints we want to work with. And if I save it, then afterwards I can add a bootstrap row and then say I'll do, use two columns. And in, let's say we can add some text in here.
And here I could add an image. Just use this one. And now if we look at the content, we have some text and an image in here. And if we look at the, um, if, okay. elements, For instance, if we look at the uh, image in here, um, Cascade uses the information about all the widths and all the breakpoints, and it creates a um, it creates images for all of the uh, it thumbnails the image so that w it's just very difficult uh, to show it here. It thumbnails all the images and it uses a source set symbol so that all the images are available for the client and the client just downloads um, the correct uh, image for, uh, for that um, uh, to, to be placed inside there. That's important if you have uh, different kinds of um, media devices like smartphones or, uh, or tablets so that uh, you always only load the, the correct image. It even works for retina displays, and uh, we have always the low resolution and the high resolution uh, image then uh, shipped uh, with it. Okay. Something um, else we can do? For instance, um, if we look at uh, this year, um, we have uh, image. We have uh, plugins to create accordion panels, and we or to create tabs in here. Something quite useful could be. Um, sometimes you have to display something de depending on the context, and you can even do some. Um, you can even use. Uh, plugins which are segments so that you can uh, ask your context if you want to, if the context, um, if for instance a user is logged in, you can just show a certain context and otherwise you just uh, show something else. So you can even uh, add some kind of logic into your websites depending on the um, on who is uh, logged in or on whatever you have uh, available in your Django context. Um, something also important is if you have um, if you have links, let's say in here. In here we have a text with a link. For instance, this one here. Um, then you can link onto a CMS page, or you can link onto external URLs, or if you have, that happens some, uh, quite often, you have your own models in, um, um, in, your, in the database for your own project, and you want to have links from the CMS onto those models. Then <coughs> there is an instruction how you can uh, create links onto your own models. So you can, uh, if, if that model supports the get absolute URL method, which is uh, used quite often in uh, Django, uh, uh, to a method to be added to uh, models, then you can just add additional links to, the, to that. Okay. What we can also do is to, we can replace the rendering template. That's, for instance, important if you want to 
In here, we are using the, a map box map, and you can just exchange the underlying template there. And and you can just change, switch it over to Google Maps and So you have a, uh, you can just exchange uh, the template which, which is responsible for rendering your context. Sometimes you want to hide certain parts of the DOM. For instance, um, because you're, let's say, you don't want to show this uh, column here the second column, you don't want to, with this here would be this one, then you can just go in here and just hide that plugin and then that column is just not rendered during and you can just use it for debugging purpose or for similar um, things while you're developing your site. Um, what you can also do is to upload phone, fonts from uh, Fontello, as I told before, and then use them inside. And then use them. Um, for instance, here we have such an uploaded font, and if we go to structure mode, and we have a look at this plugin here. Then you can just use one of those one of those fonts and um, add a, a border and um, some styling, and then you can just uh, use that uh, wherever you need it. Then there is a way to um, share certain attributes for plugins. Um, for instance, you have an image, and that image should be always um, rendered in the same size. Then you can create an alias and store that um, size information and the crop information in a um, uh, in your database, and then that's applied for all the plugins uh, which uh, use that same alias. It's, I don't want to show it here because it would take uh, to, it would it would take too much time. Um, we, you can even use um, inline plugins, which are just small snippets, uh, which can be used, for instance, to create markers or galleries um, on. Um, on certain plugins so that you have um, a certain small area, uh, a, a small um, HTML snippet added to a certain plugin which is repeatable. Um, something which can be also quite uh, useful during um, during development is that you just take all the plugins and you copy them in your clipboard and then you go to the Django admin and you can persist that uh, clipboard, you can persist this and um, I just name it clipboard. And then you can just insert the data, and in here you have a complete representation of your placeholder in JSON. And what you can do now is to copy this and to go to another website which uses the same system, and then to paste it and then to reinsert it to another placeholder. 
that's quite useful if you um, have a staging system and you created a page and then you want to add, re-add the content of that um, page from your staging system to the production system. Okay. Um, any questions about that? I could, um, it's, I'll just show another uh, slide, um, how to create your own plugins. That's for instance, um, some, uh, an example code. Uh, if you need to create uh, a plugin your own, that's a very simple one. Um, that's uh, that much code you need to uh, have uh, one input field uh, which then can be rendered uh, in your template. You have uh, in here you have a you have a field for content, and then you register that plugin into the system, and that's all what you what you have to do. And uh, so it's very uh, easy to uh, extend uh, that plugin system uh, with your own uh, with your own plugins. So we have uh, five minutes left. If you have any questions. Thank you so much, Jacob Brief. Now, do we have any questions? <laughs> Don't be shy. Yes, please. I, d I didn't get um, what you mean with testing. You um, you have only a declarative uh, form. You have only JSON in there. So, so the plugins itself uh, they have a uh, they have a test suite. So. Yes. Well, that's, that was one of the reasons um, that persistent content has been added, so that you can just pick exactly the same content and just transfer it to the other side. Um, there is, of course, every time you have uh, data somewhere inserted, you have to um, take the data from the staging system and uh, somehow get it over to the production system. There is no automatic way to do that. I am um, thinking about uh, doing a kind of shared table for the persistent content so that the shared stuff then is available from both systems so that you can just create something on the staging system and then just pick it on the production system. But then you need one database which is, uh, which is shared between the staging system and the production system. Not everybody wants that. But so, there is no kind of uh, testing in that sense because, it's, uh, because for declarative code, what you want to test, you have just one, your declaration and then uh, there is no running code in it. So, thank you very much. Do we have any questions, I think? Maybe I saw one person here. Please. Yes. Currently not, but um, you can, if you if you copy it, then it's in your clipboard. You can do it, put it into a file, so you could do it yourself. Um, if there is a good um, reason to do that, uh, to write it to a file, 
um, I will certainly consider that uh, as a possible new feature. Uh, something I would uh, also like to do is to export a, declaration, a complete declaration as rendered uh, template so that you can just uh, even use it without the system and just use a normal include so that everything can be... Um, uh, some people don't want to have such a plugin system for uh, the final site, but they want to use it for uh, fast prototyping. And for them, that could be a good um, idea. So, Any other questions? No questions? Okay, thank you very much. Jacob Reef, Django CMS Cascade Plugin System, first of all. Thank you.